So we're here at uh, Computex 2018 here with the uh, Analog X. And hi, so who are you? Uh, my name is Joseph Wan. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager at Analogix. Um, and right here you're showing that uh, this is the this is the Qualcomm Snapdragon based Windows 10 device. Correct. And it has your chip inside the ANX7440 inside. What does it do? It actually um, helps clean up the jitter and noise across high-speed signals. So the 7440 is a DP alternate mode retimer supporting USB 3.2 10G and DP 1.4 uh, HBR3. Is that what you're showing right here? Correct. So uh, you can see display port 1.4. Correct. Which is uh, what does that allow for? So 4K. 4K uh, 60 hertz or above, like 4K, you know, 90 hertz refresh rate. So you need. Uh, the DP 1.4 bandwidth to support the 4K uh, resolutions requirements. So this is where Analogic excels in the uh, DP interface in terms of signal integrity and also switchings, high-speed switchings, and also uh, a lot of um, you know uh, TCONs and also converter devices, say from uh, USB Type C to DP or USB Type C to MIP, right? Uh, is it? Are you kind of like the DisplayPort company, or not really? Like we, because you, uh, yeah. DisplayPort is a con consortium, right? Or um, many companies, but are you like the main one, or? We are one of the uh, main uh, committee sponsors. We're one of the key members inside the VESA, V E S A, that support the DP uh, and also a lot of DisplayPort type of. Uh, you know, product solution. So we're in the committee, and we're actually uh, one of the the key contributor for the uh, VESA uh, memberships. Yeah. Uh, did you invent DisplayPort or no? We actually invented the SlimPort, which slim is port. SlimPort, which is a um, you know a, a it's just a, a, a DisplayPort over USB. Yeah. Is is it? A, a, yes, a DisplayPort type of uh, interface. We we call it a SlimPort to to MIPI and, and type of uh, interface. Isn't yeah. it what all the 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 Galaxy S8, S9, and the Mate 10, Mate uh, the P20, all these phones that have PC mode, they all use SlimPort over t USB Type C or is it not SlimPort? Uh, yes, they also use SlimPort technology from Analogic to enable the DisplayPort interface. You are correct. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, the latest, the latest one, or you have a previous generation too. Or this is the the, the the one you're talking about right here. Uh, right ANX here. seven four four zero. Yeah. The right here seven four four zero is the latest uh, our uh, Sino conditioning devices. So seven four four zero will be our um, the flagship of the retimer product, and that supports uh, USB Type C connections. What, what do does it mean retimer? Uh, Retimer is a um, a signal conditioning device, removing all sorts of jitter and noise to improve the uh, the SI quality, signal integrity quality. Right when you're going through a high speed, the jitter and noise and crosstalk is going to increase at 10G. And imagine you have a very noisy signals, you're you're not going to be able to see the uh, the throughput because um, when you have a poor signal quality you're not going to be able to achieve this kind of data rate because the link's going to break. And, and is I it like because the cables are bad or what does it mean? That could happen as well when the cable has a very very poor quality of the, uh, the shielding, the grounding, and the noise and crosstalk. You may uh, incur a lot of uh, jitters across a 10G high speed. So how do you compensate or remove all these jitters? You need to have a retimers where that, that support a lot of um, you know jitter removals and and this is where we come in and help you to improve you know those uh, signal integrity across daisy chain and what we are seeing right here this is a, one of the state of the art uh, daisy chain we're connecting four devices four retimer so it goes from here to there to there to to the hard drive you see <coughs> so they go all f through all four all four so you're coming out from the host this is a 10G uh, Type C port going through the connect, uh, going through the cable, up to the first uh, retimer, and then and then the second one, uh, and then third one, and then fourth one out to the 10G uh, scan disk <coughs> SSD drive. So, is it just to demonstrate that if you go through through through, it's still keeping the same bandwidth? Exactly. It doesn't it, lose any bandwidth. It it does not degrade the bandwidth. It actually improves the signal quality from the host to the endpoint, 
right? <clears throat> so this is where we see seen right here, you've seen the 10G benefit, the 858.7 or 800 uh, megabyte per second transfer rate, demonstrating to you this is a 10G throughput happening. And right this before is a I... MacBook, this is an Intel device right here, but you can do exactly the same with this ARM part uh, Windows 10 device? Correct. Correct. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. And then this is the HP, um, the latest HP um, uh, two in one, uh, which is the it's called the the NV window system, right? And it has Windows this over ARM. Uh, DP 8.1 gigabit per second, USB 10 gigabit per second. So that's really fast USB. It, exactly. So USB 10G, it's uh, it's going to be you know pro proliferated across many platforms, and then it's happening as we speak because 10G is going to help improve the data throughput. Imagine you have some video clips, like you're going to be re recording a lot of video clip at Computex. It, it's going to be like you know upwards of five gig or seven or six gigabytes of uh, data. Uh, I mean at uh, the the yesterday the, I record 120 gigabytes in one day. So if you have a 10G, if you want to hook up to your yeah. camera and then download to your hard drive, with a 10G, it only takes 10 seconds to finish all the downloading. But it's 10 gigabits per second, right? 10 so gigabit per second. You still need uh, maybe 100 seconds. 100, seconds, well, 50 seconds. Yeah, uh, yeah, if you have 100 gigabytes, and then, then you would take, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, 10 seconds, right? So, you, you, uh, so there's this uh, really cool, I love uh, the Mate 10 and the P20 from Huawei, but then they have uh, a one called the Hunter 10, <clears throat> has the same SOC. Yeah. But it doesn't have the PC mode. Is it because it didn't include your chip? Do you know, or is it because it's just software that didn't? Is uh, it yeah, you mentioned that the the Huawei MateBook system is oh, that right? The, the Mate 10. The, the phone. Mate 10. A uh, phone. Okay. Um, yeah. They they actually are requiring that to to have DP interface. Uh, a lot of phone are being hooked up to the uh, TV. So it's through the DP interface. This is where we we Analogic can come in and help. You are inside the phone, right? Yes, we're 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 working with the Huawei, trying to get design uh, in on the Huawei uh, smartphone or tablet. You know the, those Mate uh, 10 systems. But do you also yeah. try to go inside their SOC, or you always have your own chipset on the PCB? We are gonna have a discrete. Uh, uh, you know, solution outside of their um, uh, SOC. Basically, inside or outside the SOC? Outside, basically. Always outside. O always outside. You don't want to be inside the SOC? Um, no, because um, that way they have the flexibility to place the uh, our chipset, you know, around the PCB board. If you get integrated, um, you may not have that flexibility to, to place where you want to, you know, place the chipset at to improve the signal quality. But don't some of them already included on the SOC this kind of functionality? Some of them are like being... Like Qualcomm maybe? Yeah, some of them are, are being integrated. Uh, for example, some of the uh, power management or some of the um, um, the the amplifier and then or some of the uh, analog uh, uh, amplifier devices and some of them are being integrated, correct. But our chips, which is a signal integrity product, would be kind of challenging to have them integrated inside the SOC, yeah. So are you saying that yours is maybe better quality than the ones that are inside the SOC? Um, what I'm saying is that there might be some challenging, uh, uh, you know, uh, tasks to integrate this type of a uh, uh, signal integrity product as part of the uh, SOC Phi. The Phi will not be able to handle, you know, the integration because it's actually a 30s. And when you have a 30 on top of another 30s, it's always a, a, a difficult. What do you say, 30s? Uh, 30s, uh, a serial deserializer which is a phi layer, a phi layer, right? So this is where we have this, this uh, Sino Integrity product. These are actual 30s. What does it mean, Sino Integrity? The Sino Integrity is like, you know, when you um, have a, a signal going through high speed, you're gonna have the, the eye mask opening that's fully compliant to the USB IF spec or DP 1.4 VESA spec. You have to meet all the compliance to be able to, you know, get your certification across the USB IF or VESA uh, committee, yeah. And you also, in the Chromebook, yeah. this, these are the ARM part Chromebooks that are there. Uh, I guess this yeah. is maybe a MediaTek chipset or maybe a Rock chip. I think it's a MediaTek. It, uh, oh, yeah, this is a um, uh, the the system will be a um, I believe is Qualcomm uh, ARM base uh, 
I think I think it's probably MediaTek. If it's a Chromebook, oh, right? Yeah, media. I'm sorry, it's yeah. a MediaTek. I take it. I take it yeah. back. It's a MediaTek. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but then, what does your chipset doing in this one? Is it for the also for the USB Type C? Yes, it's actually supporting USB Type C as well. Yeah. But it's not the it's not this one, right? It's not a 4K output and everything. It's a it's a 4K uh, 10G uh, output uh, USB 10G as well. Uh, but it's a passive device. It, it does not have a retimer or signal integrity product built in. It only have a passive MUX to support 10G and DP 1.4, 8.1G. What yeah. does it mean this passive? Passive meaning that you don't have a, a, a retimer built in. A retimer is a CTLE signal conditioning uh, device, right? Uh, a passive MUX basically without any of the signal integrity, re, uh, signal conditioning device inside, yeah. Uh, but so this is for data and video. Correct. And that's your your role in this device. Yeah, we have a, a part called ANX seven four four seven built in inside here. Yeah. Do you, do you also do work with the HDMI or you only work with DisplayPort? Well, we also have HDMI. Um, uh, for example, um, we have the dongle. Let me quickly show you here. Uh, <clears throat> this is a slim port uh, converting DP to HDMI, as you can tell. So in the output to the uh, monitor right here. So it go through from the phone right here. It go through our retimer, clean up the signal. Is it the this is Mate the 10? this is the Huawei? Yeah. Mate Huawei. 10, I think. I Pro? think so. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Huawei Mate oh, 10. Oh, Mate 10. Yeah, Mate 10. Yeah. Finger. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then going through our um, you know some ANX seven four four one retimer, and then hop over to the slim port uh, converter from um, type C DP to HDMI as you can nice. tell and out output to the monitor with the 4k 60 Hertz quality yeah nice and uh, yeah. this one even uh, works as a I think this could be used as a mouse and stuff like that correct, uh, correct. and uh, you can use Bluetooth keyboard and mouse it's like a PC. Yes, you can have a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth uh, type of uh, interface, yes. And uh, uh, <coughs> here you're showing uh, uh, some, what is this, VR solutions? These are the VR solutions. Wireless? Uh, no. These the are the, um, uh, no, the cable uh, tatter. Tatter, yeah. 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 And what's, what do you do with VR? So we have a, um, we call it a, um, a 7, 7688, uh, a Chicago uh, device, like uh, DP to uh, MIPI. And this is where we we actually help the resolutions, and then and this chip is built inside the goggle here. Oh, actually, seven seven four three seven five three zero DP to MIP. I take it back. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, over here, you are showing that you can do. You have the same uh, solution inside with the Intel too. You have the. This is the, the ARM Chromebook. Yeah. So the hundred E. That's the MediaTek. I think. Uh, I forgot the name, uh, eight, uh, I think 8173 or something like that. Yeah. And then you have a, uh, you're showing stuff with the Intel here? Same? Uh, yeah, this is an Intel uh, uh, early reference design, yeah. So that means your your chip here yeah, is doing... Yeah, 7447, like I said, passive uh, MUX without the retimer. Basically, the passive MUX is placed nearby the connector, so they, therefore you don't need a retimer right there, yeah. And uh, what are you showing here? What, what, we're sh what we're showing here is a uh, TCON device, our um, uh, ANX2403 Cedar, which support HDR400. So the TCON device can place directly on the motherboard, and it does not need to, you know, directly place on the on the um, uh, TV. Dis uh, I mean, the monitor display. So you can place on the monitor uh, uh, directly on the motherboard, and have the driver chips on the nearby the uh, the monitor. What does it mean, TCON? TCON, the timing controller. So, you know, when you have a display, you got to have a timing control to, to, to map the, the data coming out and driven onto the, the, to the display. And these, these can be touch uh, screen, right? Can be touch and then uh, basically, is, um, you know, to control the, right, the touch and stuff. So when you have a, this, this solution here, would it lower the cost of the display driver? What, what, are you making a display driver or what, what, is, what does it mean? No, uh, no we, don't, we don't make the driver, but we make the timing controller, the TCON controller to, to be able to, to, to drive the data output to, up to the display area. Yeah. And here's some other... Uh, some other, um, like the Surface Book, u utilizing our TCON inside the, uh, the motherboard. <coughs> So that with, a, with, a, with a pen touch, right? The Microsoft pen touch. All right. 
So where is uh, uh, Analogics based? We're based in Santa Clara, uh, in uh, near the uh, San Francisco Bay Area in U.S. And then we're headquartered over there, and uh, that's uh, and we're very pleased to showcase our latest and greatest technology uh, here at Computex. And this is where we excel in in the Retimer Senior Integrity product for USB uh, 10G and and DP 1.4, as well as TCON, as well as um, the uh, the digital converter. For for a video and, and digi digital converter from you know DP to MIPI or or um, DP to HDMI type of and this item. this Mate 10 has your chip in there on the PCB and it's just next to the USB port somewhere nearby. Is yeah, there's some it? some slim port uh, control inside. I think yeah. Is there a price for this chipset or um, is it secret? I I'm. Yes, there's a there's a price. Is it less than one dollar, or what do you think? I I, I think the street market um, it, it 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 actually dictate the market, and then I think at this point, um, I think the price will be quite competitive as well for Low, us. Oh right. Yeah. So every phone should have it, no? Is it should, why, it depends on your. It's only like four phones that are the high end phones yeah. available right now. There were some before, right? But yeah. the latest <coughs> phones, there's yeah. like four or five maybe or something. Uh, why not have all the phones have this functionality? Uh, it depends on how you want to architect your phone. If you want to support, you know, 4K display, you definitely need some, you know, higher throughput type of uh, interface, uh, a retimer or converter product. And this is where a Slimport product is able to support you with a 4K 60 hertz or 4K 120 hertz resolution. And and it'll depend on how smartphone um, mandate or or implement their feature sets, right? But uh, HDMI says that they can do. Uh, HDMI over Type C alt mode, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, doesn't that make things simpler if you don't have to convert to a display port and then back to HDMI because uh, everybody needs HDMI. Most people at the end they have HDMI on a TV. Yeah. Um, or what do you think? So nowadays the the chipsets um, <coughs> comes with a built-in DP port, <coughs> a DP transmitter port. So uh, a lot of them do not. Well, unless you have DP uh, dual mode DP, DP plus plus. Which supports uh, DP and HDMI mode, uh, but if you well, don't how have, do you do that? <coughs> well, basically, um, you, it, 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 a DP plus plus has to support, um, you know, DP, um, you know, LVDS uh, uh, signal logic. Also, has to support uh, um, TMDS, to the you know, uh, you know. Um, this TMDS DS logic is actually supported by HDMI. So we, you know, what I mean by DP plus plus, it must support LVDS and TM, uh, TMDS uh, for HDMI interface. You have a solution that does both? Um, uh, no, we don't. But Anybody else? Uh, yes, uh, other people have some some of the converters. You have a little chip that does both <coughs> DisplayPort and HDMI alt mode in one device. Yes. Yeah. Like one phone. <coughs> on on the phone, yes, they do have some uh, single chip uh, converter. You don't want to do this or? You like a display port cap? Uh, we're more in the display port uh, uh, type of uh, support, yes. But uh, why can't you just all work together and agree on standards and stuff? Why, why does it have to be? It seems like there's a fight between display port and HDMI, is it true? Um, I would say more of um, the usage model, right? I mean, if you, if you have a DP, which are uh, being, you know, uh, populated. Uh, the attach rate of DP is getting, uh, um, you know, much higher compared to HDMI. HDMI is mo mostly in the TV, and DP is it's into notebook. Like for example, this monitor has a DP or HDMI. This has a DP, this and has HDMI, DP, right? and then both. And then both, right? So. But uh, many displays like this also have HDMI, right? Correct. Correct. So. But more and more DP. Is more and more DP because the the host. Will be supporting DP more and more in the industries. That's where you see the the DP ecosystem will, will be you know panning out to yeah, other. All, all the laptops are all these Type C laptops. They're all doing DP. They're not doing HDMI or um, Type C. Well, correct, because it, because you were the first. Uh, DP was the first on the market. Uh, well, DP is first to be integrated as a Display Port, as a video port for the uh, uh, processor or chipset. So that goes with the what what's available from the chipset, and they bring it out outside to, to, to enable the DP port. But all your technologies, all this retimer, all this stuff you're talking about, can you also just do everything in HDMI too? Uh, yes, we also have um, you know other part that help uh, HDMI 
uh, signal integrity is because HDMI 2.1, uh, it's going to be running at 12 gigabit per second. So the, the TMDS is going to trans, you know, um, you know, transition to um, you know, fixed ray uh, uh, link, which is FRL. The FRL logic is running at 12G. So definitely, retimer technology will be applied, will be ap applicable to the, re uh, the HDMI 2.1 as well. Didn't they even say they want to do 48 gigabit per second, right? It's coming uh, later on. On 2.1. Yeah. On well, 2.1 is only 12 gigabit. Uh, but um, I think going forward, um, you know, the the 48 gig, uh, that that is the resolution bandwidth requirement. But with the 12 gig from 2.1. That will suffice in terms of getting the 48, uh, you know, um, uh, gigabit type of a transfer rate, uh, you know, to support that kind of bandwidth requirement. Yes, HDMI, upcoming HDMI 2.1 will be able to support that. Yeah. And you will support it. We will be factoring in those uh, feature set uh, in our HDMI 2.1 support as well. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for.